Hey everyone, this is Josh Carney. I'm a recording engineer, musician, songwriter, and a longtime user of Logic Pro. And in this course, I'll show you all of the ins and outs of the step sequencer in Logic Pro 10. Now the step sequencer came as part of the Logic 10.5 update. So in order to use this, you'll want to make sure that you're on Logic 10.5 or higher. The step sequencer is its own dedicated editor and it allows you to program patterns more easily than you would be able to in the piano roll editor. Now, this is most commonly used when programming drum patterns, but as you'll see throughout the duration of this course, there's actually a lot more you can do with it. You can program chords and melodic sequences as well. The step sequencer is also a lot deeper than it may seem on the surface. There's a lot of sub row controls and different row and step controls that can be customized. Things like adjusting the playback direction of a row independently from the other rows, note repeat, which can repeat a step up to 16 times, chance, which adds an element of probability to each note being triggered, and those are just a few examples. The step sequencer is incredibly deep, and it's a great tool for faster music production workflows. So with Logic 10.5, they introduced a new type of loop. It's called a pattern loop. These are loops that work with the step sequencer. And probably one of the easiest ways to get comfortable with working with the step sequencer is to play around with some of these pattern loops from the loop browser. So I'll just click here, and then I'll click here just to see pattern loops in the loop browser. And I'll just drag one of these into my tracks area here. And you'll see what this has done. It's created a pattern region rather than a typical MIDI region. So there's a new type of region associated with the step sequencer as well. Now to open this in the step sequencer, I'll just double click and it opens up the step sequencer editor. Zoom controls are the same as in the tracks area. If you press command up and down, you can zoom vertically and command left and right will zoom horizontally. You'll notice with longer sequences when you're zoomed in, there may be multiple panels up here that show you multiple different windows you can use the command left and right horizontal zoom shortcut to collapse these down so you can see more of the sequence all within one display. Another really important key command to remember is option spacebar. So option spacebar, when you have the step sequencer in focus, will start the playback of the step sequencer independently of the tracks area. And if I press option spacebar again, it'll stop. So why not just press spacebar? Well, if you press spacebar, it actually starts the playback up here in the tracks area. So if I have another track up here and I press spacebar, it's gonna play everything in the tracks area. Which is great if you want to audition what your pattern sounds like for your whole song, but if you just want to hear the pattern that you're working on isolated, you want to use option spacebar. Now, if I want to change up the beat a bit the second time around, I'll repeat my pattern region just by pressing command R. And then in my new pattern region, I'll come down into the step sequencer and customize the pattern a bit just by clicking on empty steps to enter in a new step, or you can click on a step to remove it. And by the way, if you forget any of the key commands that I mentioned earlier, you have preview pattern here, which is the same as option spacebar. You can zoom to fit vertically. You can adjust the slider for vertical zoom. And then you have two options for horizontal zoom as well. And let's hear this with the chords idea as well. Now, if for some reason you want to convert any of your pattern regions into MIDI regions, you can easily do this. If you right click, you can go down to convert, then go down to convert to MIDI region, or you can press Control Option Command M. And now you can edit this in the Piano Roll Editor if you prefer. So one thing you'll notice here is there isn't a different type of track or instrument for patterns. Pattern regions can be used with any software instrument. So a software instrument track can contain 
a combination of some MIDI regions as well as some pattern regions. So that's an introduction to using the step sequencer, pattern loops, and pattern regions. In the next video, I'll show you a way to create a custom key command to quickly access the step sequencer.